Hi guys, I'm going to go over a four-part procedure for a hip release. This is, these are really effective procedures that we use in clinic almost every day. Now, I want you to start thinking three-dimensionally. If you have a hip problem and it hurts on the side, the problem really isn't just on the side. It could be the hip flexors. It could be on the side itself or posterior, above or below that point. So, we're going to work our way through this whole procedure and then we're going to actually bring it all together. So, let's start with the anterior of the hip. Just going to bring the table up here a bit. So commonly we have hip dysfunction, we have problems with the hip flexors. So Mickey, I'll just get you to slide over here a little bit. Are you okay with me working on the area here? Oh yeah. Okay, so let's bring this up here and let's bring this down here. Okay, you actually got pretty good range of motion today. I do. <laughs> <laughs> today was the optimal work. Okay, there's a lot of different procedures we can use for the hip flexors on the side. But one of the most effective ones I found is actually getting in and using the forearm and taking it. In. You okay there? Oh yeah. And now let's bring this down. So bring it into tension and drop this down just a little bit there. Good. Taking it right down. There you can feel that tension now. Mm -hmm. That builds right up. Back up again. Okay. Now take a breath in, breathe out. Right. So we combine our breath with the motion. There we go. That feel a little bit easier? Oh, yeah. Now it's starting to release. There it is. It looked like you had really good range of motion until I actually brought it into a bit of tension. Okay, you okay there? Yeah. Okay, good. So, anytime we work on the hip flexors, we want to make sure that we actually also get the adductors. So we'll go on the inside of the thigh here. I'm just going to work my way around a little bit here. These are the antagonists to the gluteus medius. So if this is tight and contracted, you'll find that the area doesn't actually uh, engage in the glutes as, as much as it should. We're actually diminishing neurological input to the glutes. So let's work through those adductors. How you doing there? I'm a little tender. All right. It's not tender, is it? Well, it's a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, all right. So how many times you actually do passes on the area will depend on the individual. You need to feel a bit of a release. Like you're really tight here. Let's use your air. Actually, breathe in, breathe out. Let it drop. Hold. Drop right down. So now that we've done the anterior section, let's move on to the glute medius itself. So I'm going to get you to lie on your side and just face over, please. Okay, so let's have you yeah, bend the bottom one here a little bit. But you're going to take the top one and you're actually going to be bringing it behind here. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So a lot of times we're working on the areas we may actually work and try and loosen that up a little bit in the lower part. How's that feeling in there? Yeah, that's good. Good, good. But what I'd like you to do this time is you bring it up here, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take this arm up and this leg down in the procedure. Okay? okay? So up here, and I'm going to actually just get on top here, bring the leg down behind the foot. Take your foot over it. Yes. Okay, how are we doing? Oh. Feel that quite a bit? Yeah. Hold that. Come back up again. Again, I'm going to rip towards the iliac crest here, taking it down. Glute med, some of the fibers of um, glute max, but also glute minimus underneath that. Okay? That's nice. That, it's really good. Yeah. For opening that up and down. Good. And what's actually pretty cool on this one, too, is that I can actually. Bring this up here. You okay? Oh yeah. Okay. And then I'll just bring this right across here above the crest. Bring the leg down. Oh my goodness. Bring this up. Oh. Okay. Bring it, let the arm go. Go, go, go. There we go. I'm going to just kind of put a little bit of torsion in there. Really feel that one, don't Holy you? Holy cow, yeah. And again, take it down. Right down. Right down. Good, good. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move over a little bit towards the QL here. Okay. So we'll get the camera to actually come around here a bit. And you okay? Oh yeah. Just up here, and then I'm going to actually work my way down. So we've got the paraspinals in here, and I get the QL from the ribs on down here. And then I'll come in and kind of work my way in there. Bring this down. Okay. And then I'll put a little bit of torsion in there. Back up again. You okay? Oh, yeah. Take it down. Good. Down. One more 
time. Take it down. Right down. Back up. And down. Good. Bring it up. There's one more thing you can do on the side here is I can just take traction down like this, and right down, all the way. There we go. So I'm going to pull the arm up here, and I'm going to traction down there at the same time the leg goes down. How's that feeling? Really nice. It just feels like it's opening up space in my little back and in my oh, whole side. Yeah, I can feel your hip just release there <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's good. Back up again. Okay, so now we're going to move a little bit towards the posterior area in there. Okay, let's go over the posterior aspect of releasing the hip. Now, it's really important that we can actually get onto the fascia that connects in from the glutes up into the latissimus dorsi. It's really interesting because the fibers actually cross and we actually have to find a way to get in there and free this up. Mickey, I want to get you to actually go into child's pose for this. Okay. Bring this down over here. Sit right back. Are you okay in that position there? Oh, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. So, what I'm gonna do if we were treating the left-hand side here is take your arm across here and I'll get you to back up a little bit there with the camera. Thank you. And so we're gonna do a nice stretch from here. You okay there? Oh yeah. No problem there? Not at all. Okay. So what I would do is I'd actually start up working across the iliac crest, see if we can't actually work all the way up to here. We're going to come from both sides here. So. There we go. You okay there? Oh yeah. Good. You can really feel that, can't you? Yep. Do I should bring this over here? We head down more. Okay. Right. Yeah, even more. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Whatever it takes to bring you into tension. How's that feeling? Oh. Feel that quite a bit? Yeah. Okay. Now, in this case, I don't want to leave Mickey with one side really released while the other side is still tight <laughs> because this is a little bit tight down here. So let me move the other side over here. Take the arm across, head down in there. Up, and then I'm going to just open this right up. How are we doing? Oh, we got the sides way tighter. Yeah, this oh is. My yeah, <laughs> really tight. We also worked on that other side a little bit, so it's going to release above and below that point. Mm -hmm. So, you feeling that quite a bit? Yeah. Okay. Good. So I mentioned this is a four-part release. We release the anterior, the lateral side, and the posterior. The last aspect we have to do is actually releasing the joints. A lot of people don't realize it's not just a matter of releasing the soft tissue, but we have to consider joint function. Not just the SI joints or the hip joints itself or the lumbar spine, whichever area is restricted. And this is a real key thing. It's never just soft tissue and never just joint. It's usually both. So, Mickey, you okay with my evaluating the lumbar spine here? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, for sure. I'm going to get you to turn on your side towards me, please. So, I'm just going to get in there a little bit and just see how things are moving. You know, a little tension in the low back here? Always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring you over the edge here. So, it depends on your scope of practice. We have certain videos that actually show you how to mobilize the lumbar spine without doing manipulation. If manipulation is within your scope of practice, then that's what I highly recommend. Okay, drop this down, over, have it drop down, let it go. Thank you. Other side, please. Everything's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. But both of these SI joints are not moving too well. No. No, okay, let's bring this up here. Down, over, drop down. There we go. Way better. Now, there's one aspect here which usually is not addressed very well. Let me just bring the table up here a little bit. And for a lot of people, when they come in, I'll find that if I take their leg through range of motion, it's moving okay, but maybe not quite as smooth as it should be. I want to open up that hip joint a bit. 
So I have another little drop over here. You okay there? Oh yeah. See where it kind of sticks here a little bit? Yeah, right there. Good. We'll do it a couple times. Okay. Second one, totally there we feel. go. Big change. Yeah. Just do the other side over here. This one's not too bad, actually. No. Yeah. Mind you, though, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little freer. Yeah. So this basically shows you some of the standard procedures we do to open up the hips really helps with low back pain, a lot of the chronic issues people have. Extremely effective.